Okay, folks, let me get your attention. Um, I, I want to I wanna take you through a thing on lighting that will cover a couple other more advanced concepts and then also cover the rendering that we talked about last week. Um, so hopefully we'll have a video that will cover all of that and you'll have more insight into what we're doing. Um, I'm also going to talk about some other windows um, that we've referred to in the past, but maybe not, um, maybe not with enough, with enough detail. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go into my application. I'm going to hit my eight key and open up this thing, which is called an explorer. An explorer is very similar to a schematic. Um, the only difference is that the explorer lays out your entire scene in a hierarchical structure like a file requester. Now the reason it's important here is that the way I want to light is by turning off my other lights. Um, anywhere where I see an H, I've turned off a light already. So I'm going to come back to this. Um, one thing I'm going to do to start is I'm going to delete all my lights. Uh, and I can see them all in here from there to there, and I can hit delete, and my scene should be lightless. Now, I'm in texture decal mode, so it's showing me all of the imagery. If I go to, um, if I go to just OpenGL, it should show me not much of anything, because there shouldn't be any lights in here presently. And let me make sure. I can check that by looking here. Oh, no, I still do have them. Um, these three are lights that did not delete. Let's find out why. Why didn't you delete? How about you? There's that spot, but it's hidden. So actually, let me middle mouse select these. That's probably why they didn't um, delete. There they go. Now we have no lights. And I'm going to pull a render region because I can get a much better feedback on all of this with a render region. Like that. And it should be pretty dark might not be 100% dark because there's something called <coughs> ambient light, which is, is just a bad fake. But if I used Lambert shaders, I shouldn't have too much of it. You'll see it's funny. It still takes time to render it. Um, I can turn this detail while well, the detail slider is down. OK, and I'm going to go back here. Um, what this scene consists of, and we can even just scrub through it. Ah. You know what, let me close this for a sec. So you can see everything that's going on. Almost, come on, shut that. Oh, I'm still trying to render those. The reflections are causing it to have some issues there. Okay. we look at it in the top view here, we have this camera path, we have the letters, we have two globes making our universe, and we have a couple globes making our world. And so if I, if I scrub now, we should see that playing, although it, let me turn this OpenGL view off. Again, if you have questions, you can certainly ask. Good. I'm going to go to uh, hidden line removal, which should be fast. Deselect. And then you'll see very little movement there. All right, I'm going to change this to show me um, all views so you see them all moving at once. And you see the camera coming back. And the letters moving. And here I'll scrub it to give you better. So what I have to do is I have to light my universe. I have to light my world. And I want to get that gag of the, the, the rim of the sunlight coming over the planet as it illuminates my greatness. Let's start with the universe. Uh, I'm going to pull my render region here. This should be all black. And I'm going to start with a point light. A point light is a light that casts light in every direction. 
uh, primitive light point. And you'll see it's going in the middle of my scene. My scene is a little set off to the, um, to the uh, left. Uh, I'll move it, though it shouldn't make too much difference uh, with me moving it, because it's just going to shine light in every single direction. Um, if anything, that kind of makes my world look weird. And there's a thing about it. If I'm in a different camera view, and I'll go to a different camera view just so we can see around this world. Yeah, come on, go to a different. Okay. Um, what you'll see, and maybe we can see this with OpenGL. So we'll try it that way. We can't see it well with OpenGL, that's for sure. If I move this light around, there it is. You'll see my scene change. See that? And I don't actually want the world lit at all anyway, so that probably works out for the best. I, I might put it back here, and I should be looking through my other camera, because this is what's going to see. If we open GL this, um, and we look over here, by putting this behind the planet, I bet you all have the most even light of my environment, which is what I really want. Let me pull a render region, and I will take a look. And this would also be um, the color of the world at night, as it were, with light not hitting it. Now, I have some reflections and things to worry about, uh, mostly reflections of the rest of the universe, but that's based on the objects I'm using. Um, I might even want to fine tune those right now. Uh, I have to go in to find my world, although let me use that other window. Um, if I name things better here, it'd be easier to find my world, which actually is right there. Um, and then from there I should be able to get to the shader right there. And I can deal with the reflectivity issues. Uh, you're not reflective there, you are transparent. Although I could turn off transparency for you. That it must be the globe inside of that one. This one here. Let me alt and enter that one. Check that shader. There's my diffuse color. There's my transparency, my reflection. I can turn this reflection down. It will probably make this world look less shiny. Yes. I'm worried about that black gap there, but I think that's based on something bouncing back internally. We will talk about that. Um, but as long as this universe is okay, I'm pretty much the okay with it. And the universe, wherever I'm looking at it, I'm seeing it as stars in the background, which is what I really want to see. So that point light is serving that role. Let's see here, if we look behind, do we see universe? The way we want to see universe? And you notice this can be time consuming. Um, there are several ways to uh, shortcut this time consuming, by the way. Probably I could use smaller textures, but I kind of like these ones, so. Okay, so my universe looks okay back here. That's what I'm worried about. Um, Let's go to the far out position here. And now let's light the world. And this is going to be a main light um, hitting this world. I'm going to use something called infinite light, which is designed to simulate sunlight. It's based strictly on a direction. I go primitive, I'm going to go light, I'm going to go infinite, and you'll see what it gave me is it gave me, if I zoom in on it here, this thing here, um, and I'll increase its intensity to one just so it lights everything up well. The trick about this light is that the location of it does not matter at all. Watch, that won't change. The only thing that matters with it is its direction. This should change it drastically, see? So like sunlight, it's a matter of what 
direction does it hit the world with? Now, I want this to light just the world, so I'm going to leave it hitting dead on like that. I probably don't want it to illuminate this whole background. So I'm going to try something, um, a more advanced trick, which is called inclusive and exclusive lights. I can actually tell what lights affect what objects by saying this light will only affect this and this, and this other light will only affect this and this. Um, right there it says selective light, inclusive, which means whatever's included under this light, it will illuminate. Um, if I go back to that explorer here, this is that light, and actually, you know what, let's rename it. Um, we should be able to rename it here, probably. Uh, we're going to call this world light. So I know that's what's in it. And I want these two spheres, this one and this one, which is here. It must have the other one in it, to be controlled by this. So if I take this and I drag it up here and drop it, it should now be underneath this. Uh, we'll even call this thing world or earth. And that should now, although it's still lighting my background, um, let me take this light here, which is my other light. I'm going to turn it off by hiding it. If I just hit the H key, that light is no longer influencing our scene. The only thing that's influencing our scene is this directional light. So if I go into it, uh, let's turn on its shadows here, which means it will now cast shadow. So it's coming from this direction here. It means the Earth should cast a shadow if that surface takes it. But again, that surface shouldn't be taking it, so that should not be a problem. Uh, now let's go back into it here. World light, infinite exponent 2, diffuse specular. Let's make it exclusive. Exclusive means it should light everything except what's in that. Except it's not giving me that feedback. Let me figure out why. Uh, we are in mental ray. Oh, you know what? Let's go to the, the scan line. This will make it render faster. There we go. Sorry, that makes it render probably too fast. Um, I need to increase my quality a little bit here. We're going to talk about those render options momentarily. Okay, that's, that's better. I'm going to use my back arrow to get back to my light here. Let's make this inclusive now. Which means the background shouldn't change, but the earth should. Uh, I'm going to try a larger intensity just to see the effect of the light. That's still affecting everything. And let me figure out why rendering... I probably have to go somewhere else to tell it to take the inclusive exclusive um, issues. Geometry, rendering, inheritance, modes, flat light. Uh, you are inclusive. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use our help. Oh, my god, it just suddenly started. Oh, no, that's because I changed my intensity. I put my intensity back at 1. A light value of 1 oh should kick back the same value it gets. Uh, light type, exclusive, let's see where they say that. Uh, selective light, okay. The associated models, right. Accept those in the associated models. Let me make sure it has the associated models, which should be here. World light, there's the problem. I have to put it actually up in here. There, ha ha much better. Made my earth disappear, but we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> I have to take this guy too, wherever it might be, sphere three, and I have to put it in the associated models too. Uh, associated models, earth, where's sphere three? 
Sphere 3, Sphere 3. They actually have stuff to help you find this because it can be so tricky. Uh, uh, current. Current layer, maybe? There's Sphere 3. I need to put this Sphere 3 in this associated models thing. Light my world. Light my world. Light the world. There it is. Good. Finally. I have that light just light in the world. That means that if I move it around, which uh, should work, I, I can make th this light will now control what this thing looks like at night. Although, oh, I hate that it's moving the whole world with it. That's probably because I put the other thing underneath it. Uh, but I can break that link. Good. That should now allow me to move it, yes. Um, okay, now let's go turn back on our other light. I go back here and I hit H again. We now have both lights lit up, although this is a case where I don't want the world to be lit by that light that's lighting my whole background. So let's take the universe, which I know is this and this, sphere one and two, and we'll put those in this light, which we'll also rename universe lighting. <coughs> so I get my property panel, which is way down here. Come to me, property panel. There it is. No, actually, that's some loose explorer. You're my property panel. OK, my property panel. We're going to call this universe light. Good. And this will be inclusive, which means when I drag into its associated models, sphere one and sphere two, let's make sure that's them, they should only be lit by it. Which means my world should no longer be lit by them. Which I hope it is. Let's see. Sphere one and sphere two, yep. So we have our universe light, we have our world light. And we can now play with them. If I modify the universe light, we'll put it to 1 -0. It shouldn't change the coloring on here. It's changing it a bit, I think, because I still have a reflectivity issue on the planet. But I'll, I'll deal with that. Uh, I wonder if I want shadows on with it. Let's try shadows and see how it affects it. Not too much. OK. I have these two lights now. And let's go back in our timeline a bit. There's something I should do, by the way, which I haven't done in a while. That's right. Save. Good. Because <laughs> I put all this work and I don't want to lose it. And you can see it gets a little boggy. <laughs> Come on. There we go, sort of. This is actually one of those times when um, this can be very useful and it's going to affect us in rendering anyway. Control Alt Delete. Do this. Start my task manager and put up my processors just so that I know my computer is still working. I can even hide this somewhere like over here because I'm not using that area that much. And then I know my processors are in use so I know nothing's died. Uh, let's do the save as. Uh, you'll see, even though this is final, I have a lot of different versions of this. Um, and you know what? I'm going to put it on Roto, because Roto is where I want to render from our, our network. Uh, but not right now. I'll, I'll keep it here for now. Let's call this uh, Logo Render 4 with Motion Blur Final 10. Just sort of like an old Final Fantasy thing. Uh, and we're saved, which is good. And so now I have, this is my world at night. And I kind of like that. I'll even turn this down a little bit. 
maybe, well, not that low. Maybe I want to get a quick preview of this um, just to get a feel for what's happening. Uh, I'm going to do a start capture. I don't think we'll get all 900. We'll try, you know, we'll just stop it when we're, we feel satisfied with it. I'll go to a slightly lower resolution like this and hit OK just so that it will hopefully spit me out a bunch of frames. And actually, watching our processors should tell us a lot now, too. Boy, I wish that window didn't disappear on me. There it is. I'm working off a USB 3 drive, which I probably shouldn't be. To tell you the truth, that might be causing more of my slowdown than anything else. There's the first. Yeah, this is too long. <laughs> I'm going to move myself local because I, I feel I feel if I move the files locally, they'll work a lot faster. Um, and the way I'm going to do it, stop, stop. I'm actually going to shut it. I'm going to drag the whole folder over. And these are the old ones. We know we just saved, so no need to busy it with that. Bang that out. Uh, I'm going to head over to my uh, removable drive. I have that whole folder here. That's where I've written everything. Let me make sure of that. <coughs> there it is. That's my last one there. Uh, so let's just take that whole folder and we will drag it over to our plenty speedy network drive. This thing should deliver 60 megs a second. Which it's strangely enough doing. Man, you have to like that. Okay. That worked. Let's head back to soft. Soft, 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 soft. Now we'll reopen it from the network drive. It probably should do everything a lot faster. This is more of that file maintenance I'm always talking about. This is really pure file maintenance. I'll resize ourselves over here, put that over there, yank that like that. Uh, I'm going to go to the Z drive, Z, my new scene. This should be it. Mm, no. Yes. Let's see, there's one processor working away there. Up oh, a few more. Let me resize this. Come on, there we go. Okay. Now, let's pull the render region again and see what happens. If I'm correct, these machines have four cores. And each core is hyper-threaded, which can be an issue, but so it shows eight separate processors. And each tile here should go to one processor, which it's not doing right now. But let's see why. There they go. OK. Uh, I'm actually going to turn that down to there, good, which seems pretty fast. In fact, I'll go down one more like that. Now let's try that start capture again. We'll pick a resolution of 400 here, and we'll hit OK. There may actually be a render setting that's slowing this down, because I used a very large tile size. Let's see what happens here which will normally go faster when we're doing a high-res image. Though it might be that the tile is so big it can't use all the processors, which means I'm wasting, I'm wasting processor cycles. Because I, I, when this is doing that, I'd like to see that pinned to 100%, and I'm not seeing that. So let's fix that. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, we'll go here. We'll convince it to stop. Stop. 
Okay, this will be some rendering stuff, actually. Uh, <coughs> my render options are set globally, but when I'm doing this area here, I have a separate list. It's all right here. Uh, under optimizations, b -b 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 tile size, I'm going to reduce that to here, which is a smaller amount. The frame buffering I'm okay with. Uh, I do not have motion blur on. My aliasing is actually quite low. My secondary reflections are not big. Let's see if that made the difference just doing that change. Uh, I might also give these a different name because they're going to an ugly place. Um, you see where they're going? I'm going to actually put them over to Roto in my folder here. Good. Uh, and I'm going to give them a different format. Um, it's a good choice here. TIFF's always happy, but a little bit big. You know what? I'm just going to go for basic JPEG. Uh, and let's see if that made a difference. If this is working right, I should see a lot more processor usage there. Feels like it's sort of taking its time. What I'm hoping is this will start spinning in frames about, you know, four or five a second. That's my dream. <laughs> Once it gets done all of its paperwork issues. Three. And it seems like the read and writes are what are causing the problem here. Because this would take forever for me to just get this test render. And you'd like to do test renders before you do big renders because, you know, you won't know what's going on otherwise. You know, at least it's picking up a little bit. That little window down there that says render is the one that actually shows what it's doing, but I still have some other issues with it, so I'll let it get to 10, which isn't that far. No, you know what? I won't even let it get to 10. Because it's just taking too long as is. Stop. Okay, this will show me those first seven, which you'll see is not a lot going on there but it does give me some small idea, some very small idea. Wait for the program to respond. I'm gonna put this back to, uh, you know what I'll do is I'll go to hidden line removal and see if that's going to make a difference. And it really should be with that window coming up. You know what, maybe that's unhappy being there. That's possible that um, the CPU display window is causing it some issues. I'm gonna put it, I'll put it there uh, and see if that's causing the problems. See, that should be getting ready to render already. Come on, oh no, there it is, good. That's what I want to see. I want to see it moving fast. Okay. Let's say that we're okay with that. I want to light my letters now. I'm going to try something with this, with the letters. I'm going to attach a spotlight to the camera. Now, if I look at my camera, I'm going to open up that, um, this again. Uh, this is the camera that I'm using. No, which I already, uh, oh, that's good actually. 
should say this is the camera that I'm using right here. And we're looking through it. And one reason I want to select is if I hit the F key here, you'll see that's where that camera is. Now, we used a point light to light that whole universe, and we used a directional light. Actually, I'm wrong about that. No, yeah, and then we used a directional light to light the Earth. A spotlight combines both a point light and a directional light. Both its direction and where it is matters. It's actually just like a camera. Uh, I'm going to go down here to light. I'm going to go down here to spot. And if I look at it over here, this is my spotlight. If I look at it here, uh, you'll see that I should get scene, 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 scene root. Good. Um, I should get a spot root, and then I get a spot and spot interest. And if we try our schematic, F, we get this little parented structure much like we get with a camera, right? So, first I want to set the thing up. Uh, I'm going to go to it. Um, and actually I'm going to do something else. I'm going to look through it. I can look through a spotlight the way I can look through anything else. Any, I should say, like a camera. Once I have a spotlight, I have a choice. Spot. This is what the spotlight's seeing. I want my spotlight to be over by my camera. I'll back myself out here a little bit. And there's my camera. So I'm just going to move it the way I would use it with any other control here. Uh, I can even, this is sort of an interesting trick, if I select my light, or if I select my camera, I should say, camera, 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 and I hit the F key, I just framed up the camera with the spotlight. What I mean by that is the spotlight just went over to where the camera is. Since these are virtual cameras and spotlights, I can put them right on top of each other. I can put a light directly in front of a camera, or I can put a camera directly in front of a light, and I never have to worry about what it sees. If you look over here, when I move the light around, you'll see it affecting what happens there. See that? So I can decide where I want it to be in relation to everything. I also can decide how big of a spot I want it to have. If I, um, and I'll do it from the schematic for a little bit. This is my spot itself. This is the angle that it's actually seeing. It says 60 degrees there, and do you see these lines? When I move these in, it's zooming the spotlight in. It's just on the D. See that? And I can see it lighting just the D over there. If I wanted to just light the C, and by the way, because this is soft homage, you can, you can animate any of this if I wanted to. If I was animating um, the rotations of the light right now, I could be animating it so it's going back and forth over these lights, so it's doing any sort of thing I want it to do. Now, I actually want it to be bigger, although let me show you a couple of the features while we're here. In this window, we have two rings. This ring is the hot spot of the spotlight. This ring is the shadow area of the spotlight. So you see I'm right on the S here, but I go out to the D and part of the C. Um, let, me, um, let me decrease this area here so it becomes sharply in focus. Uh, let's see, that's my cone angle. No, that's just getting more of it. Let me hit Alt and Enter, bring up my whole property panel here. Um, there it is, the spread angle here. When I shut this to zero, that disappears, and we should have a sharp edge on where the light finishes. Let me show you what I mean. It'll be halfway through the C. See that? That's like a sharp edge spotlight. If I want the spotlight to have a little bit of blur on the edge, and again, I could animate this too. Um, down here, this would be like two degrees of blur. And so just that area there will be blurry, and you can see it like that. Now, I probably want to have a slightly bigger area than this, and I want it to light both all my letters at once. So maybe something like that, and a little bit wider out. Maybe something around there. I'm going to increase the intensity of it to 1 so it spits off a lot of light. I will turn on its shadows because I want to get the effect of the shadows. 
which means these will actually cast shadows on each other. See that? I might turn up this detail a little bit so I can see it more. Good. Um, I may even decide to make it a little bit yellowish just because it will give it a warmer glow. But really, I should probably change the color of my letters. But I'll, I'll try that at another point. Um, for now, this is fine. Um, let me parent it in now. What I need to do is I need to take this light here, I need to parent it to my camera, which is parented to that curve so that everything will move together. And Bob's your uncle, as they say. Uh, okay, so here's my light. I'm going to cut it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take it and its interest, both of those. And I'm going to cut those from their root. So they're no longer connected to their root. I can delete the root. And I'm going to take them and I'm going to parent them to that. Parent, middle mouse, this guy, right mouse. And what they should do now, if I move, watch down here, my light's moving with my camera. Let's see when it re-renders this. Come on, re-render. Yep. Now if we pull out to here, let's see how it's lighting it. If we get this one, I'm going to try one other lighting trick, and then we'll take a break. Good. Now, the only thing here is the world's getting very, very bright because we have that inclusive-exclusive thing again. And what I probably want is I probably want this spotlight to just affect my letters. I'm getting kind of heavy into inclusive lights here. Um, I personally like inclusive lights and exclusive lights. It's a good way of controlling your lighting. It's something you can't do in reality easily. Let me open up that other window. Good. And um, I'm going to open up that Explorer again, which is here. Uh, we know we want this here spotlight, which is probably going to be somewhere deep in my camera. Camera. There's my spot. We want this spot to be controlled by. Ah, I'm sorry. We want these letters. We want these letters to be in this spot's associated models. So I'm going to open up these windows like this so that I can take this and drag it up here and drop it. And now it should just affect those letters, which leaves all the rest of my lighting the same. So that when we're dead on it, we should have this spotlight just illuminating those guys. It means I might even want to increase the... Um, the brightness of the spotlight so it gives me better kickback if I want because it won't affect anything else. Uh, if I go here, for example, um, ba -ba -ba, we'll close that, and I go from one to three just to see what that looks like, the letters should be brighter, which they are. But the rest of the stuff isn't affected. Okay, now I want to get that nice sunlight glow coming from the distance as if the sun is rising on my name around the earth, that whole gag. Universal thinks that's worthwhile. I'm going to use another spotlight. Um, I'm going to go to a top view here, and I'm going to take a spotlight, light, spot. And what I want to do with this light, I'll turn up its brightness. Uh, we'll turn on its shadows. I want to make this light give me a rim of light right out the edge of the planet here. So let's look through it first. Here's spot one. Uh, I'll get my bearings a little bit. Good. And now this is affecting everything, remember, right now, but we might change that later. But let's see. And you can see it giving me some feedback as I'm doing it. That way in the distance there, that's my camera and other light, so it'd be good if they could see part of it. Now, now I'm going to go for a gag. A gag is like a, uh, a gag's an effect that like really has no bearing on anything else, but people like the way it looks. So you just kind of stick them on. You just drop them in place. The gag we're going for, it's actually a, um, it's a gag that's greatly overused in um, Photoshop. We're going to go for the lens flare gag. 
I have a light, like I do, uh, here, which is my new spot, I can put a lens flare on it. If I find out where the hell it is. I'm going to go to uh, the render window because they have more of that stuff here. Property, lens flare. Good. Now I have my spot picked. That's very important because that's what I want to be on. Uh, lens flare. Bam. Now you see, <laughs> it's a gag. It just drops on there. Bam. One nice thing about these lens flares, it actually gives them their head and shoulders above your, uh, your Adobe 2D lens flares. These things are 3D. Um, and the thing about a lens flare, did anybody ever use a camera and get a real lens flare? Did you ever? I, I'm going to just, not, not, not strictly for self-promotional reasons, but because it's a good example of it. Um, if I go to YouTube, I have a, uh, a, a video I made some time ago um, of a sunset with a lens that actually gives you a lens flare. I mean, it doesn't give it to you. You have to look for it. <laughs> uh, but it shows it. Um, uh, 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 around there. No, 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 no. What are these listed by? Oh, yeah, that's no good. Probably this will get it. Um, this here. This is a sunset shot with an old Minolta lens. And actually, it should even say when the lens flare comes, though you will see it directly. There we go. That is real lens flare. Lens flare is a problem inside lenses. It's actually internal reflections. And what's weird about it is that for literally like a hundred years, photographers worked hard to get rid of it because <laughs> it points out that you're shooting with a camera. <laughs> like you're not supposed to have it. It happens when you have the insides of lenses are generally painted black to absorb all the light. When you have a very bright light source like a sunset, and you have a lens with different surfaces, they'll start to create these reflections. They give you a nice, like, it's strange to me that it's now an effect people pay for because it's an error. It's not supposed to happen. Um, you'll see another one later down here coming right there. And actually, it's funny because this will be star-shaped. Um, a lot of a lens flare has to do with the number of um, blades of the aperture because it has to do with the way the light's reflecting inside and a number of other surfaces. But so that is a real, not created in a 3D program, an actual lens making a lens flare. Now I show it to you because if you look down here, that's designed to imitate it. And the thing about it is since this is a 3D lens flare, it is very controllable. Um, I can have the number of rays I want this thing to have. And actually I prefer four if I remember right make sure I get in the right place on it. There we go. That's four. I kind of like that. Um, I can, uh, you know, I'm gonna have them auto rotate and I'll turn on twinkle as well for whatever that does. I can control all the other settings too. Um, brightness, size, let's make it smaller. Although that doesn't seem to be doing much to it. Most of these controls, whoa, that was a massive change. I do not want to mess with the aspect ratio. Let me try size again. Oh, how about brightness? How about a lower brightness? Okay, let's see what glow does. Glow isn't even on, but watch what happens when I do turn it on. It'll be kind of scary. Or I'm wrong, it won't be kind of scary. <laughs> Let me try a different frame because sometimes you have to um, jump to a different frame for it to reread everything in. Nope. <laughs> okay, let's increase the brightness of that. Come on. I can actually do it on any light. I can have lights give off lens flares or not give off lens flares, though you do have to see them to get the effect you want. You're not giving me any good effect there. You know what, let's see what happens if I pick flare file. We'll pick standard large. Okay, that added a lot more noise here. See that? And now let's try this. There we go. That's giving me more, whoa. See, that's, that's, that's kind of cool, but you know, I don't know if it's that useful. Although, to tell you the truth, I sort of like that. 
So what I'm going to do is on frame 900, this is what I'm at the end. This is what I want the lens flare to be the most pronounced. By adjusting where the light is, I can control the lens flare. Let me show you what I mean. If I move myself over so we don't see it, no lens flare. As I get closer to the edge of my planet, that's where we start to bring in the lens flare. And you'll see it's a fairly subtle movement. Wow, it's a really subtle movement. Let me try bringing my, um, my light closer to the surface of my planet. Let me try changing the angle too. That's getting interesting. And so I might want to play with the movement of this thing as it comes across. So if I were to, um, yeah, let's go a little bit further there. It's funny, right when it meets the edge of this thing, uh, I'm going to go back to my light, and I'm going to change that outer edge uh, ba -ba -ba, down here so that we don't have any sharp outer edge, so that it is strictly when this part hits it that it would see the light as it were. Now let's see about going this way. Remember the whole purpose of this is just to light up the edge of that planet. So I could play around with that. Um, let me take a break for a few and set up a couple other things and then we will do a separate thing on rendering again like we did last week so we'll have it, okay? But this is a, a rough it in lighting you want to save as you're going. You have those three different types of lights, and you have quite a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, let me, here, I'm going to stop that cap.